Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pause Up Preview uh, for FIU Baseball as they look to keep the good times rolling with a tough matchup in Coral Gables as they take on the Miami Hurricanes. These are always some very fun matchups whenever they show up in the in the uh, baseball season, and they happen quite a bit. Four games in this season, FIU will be taking on our uh, – Crosstown rivals over in Coral Gables or UCG, as you will. Kevin, uh, I think you are already warranted one automatic uh, canes down. Yeah, we'll do a couple more. Yeah, we'll probably do a couple more as this progresses. But uh, yeah, uh, that's Kevin Brawl, my friend and co-host. And uh, yeah, it's just fun to um, talk more uh, about baseball. Our last preview was actually for opening day when they took on uh, Long Island. And now, again, a big matchup coming off a big series against middle Tennessee and uh, that they, that they actually won. So they're kind of riding off that high and we'll be in Coral Gables seeing what they can do against uh, a very, always a very good uh, baseball program in the Miami hurricanes. Um, as, as this preview progressive it progresses, it's going to be more than just a preview for baseball. We also have some news about both uh, basketball uh, football as well. Not, not to mention a look around FIU athletics. So, should be a fun time, Kevin. And uh, uh, but priorities first. All right, FIU baseball. They're taking on a team that they have lost ten straight games to, Kevin. Uh, I've seen pretty much all of those. I know you've seen your and been to your fair share as well. Uh, it sucks losing to that team. Yeah, you said it. Um, this is a very good Miami Hurricanes team, no matter what the roster looks like. I think a lot of people thought this team wasn't going to be as good as what we saw last season, just given the yeah. loss that they had with Levinson, Yoni Morales, a couple pitchers also left that team. I know Patelli's no longer with them, brother of Nick Patelli. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, a lot of losses, but a lot of new additions and a lot of new guys stepping up to, you know, the plate. Jason Torres, someone who I honestly, I don't think we saw too much of last season, leads the team in the, well, it's second in OPS, if yeah. you want to get it that way. Uh, Daniel Covet, who has actually been the biggest name for the Hurricanes this season, leads the team with a 1, 1,318 OPS. Uh, and then you have a lot of other guys, you know, I, I mentioned him to you last year, Lorenzo Carrier, who's yes. 6'5", 280. That guy's an absolute unit. He's been having a very nice season for the Canes, mm -hmm. but uh, as well as Blake Sear, who is the uh, ACC, who was named a, a freshman All-American last season. Yeah. Already a ACC player of the week. So he's off to a very nice start. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a very good Canes team. Dorian Gonzalez, we know him well. Eduardo Villegas, Jacoby Long. I mean, this is a team that, although has a lot of new players, mm -hmm. a lot of returners as well. And then we'll, we'll talk about the pitching matchup in a second, which in a sec, yeah. My friend Jonathan Mayer put it up on the website today. Oh, he did? He he put up well on David Eckes will be the FIU starter. Okay. I need to go back and check who their who uh UM will be. I'll just give you a quick look. I, Kevin, I the name. The last time FIU beat Miami in baseball, it was April 25th, 2018. Were you Dude, there? Now, what, what were you doing in 2018, Kevin? I think I was pro I was in middle school still, I think. <laughs> that were, was what you were there, right? I no. Or you were, you were just wrapping up high school. Yeah, I, I I literally graduated high school a couple months after, and then I went to uh, college the, a month after. So that was even before my my time. But that was FIU's last win in this series in baseball. It was April twenty fifth, twenty eighteen, over in Coral Gables, convincing win by the way, fourteen to six. But after that. Uh, it's just been loss after loss after loss. Some of some of them have been close, right? You had what immediately comes to mind, and you and I were both there. We were literally calling it on Mixler, that walk-off uh, bottom of the ninth homer uh, to steal the win for the Canes. Yeah. Not to mention uh, a few run rules here and there, uh, some really bad beatdowns here and there. But for the most part, the games between uh, the University of Miami have only gotten more competitive over the years. And... A lot of that has to do with the fine recruiting that head coach Rich Witten has done with this FIU Panthers team to sort of match what Miami has based their teams in the, uh, how, how they have based their teams in the last few years, which has been power at the bat 
with solid pitching throughout the game. That's been Miami's mindset as they look to get into Omaha to as they have national championship aspirations. Uh, FIU has done a good job as of late, sort of matching that. Yeah, definitely. And I think the biggest thing to look at is just – Look at the guys who kind of took down this FIU team. Yanni Morales is obviously the big name there. Mm-hmm. He won the second round of the MLB draft to the Washington Nationals. You talk about that walk-off, Zach Levinson. He's now with the St. Louis Cardinals in their organization. And funny enough, I saw him play the other day in that pro- in the spring breakout game, and he hit a home run oh, yeah? off of one of the Marlins pitchers. So funny enough, that, that was a funny coincidence there. Uh, aside from that, you know, it's, it's a lot of guys who have beat down FIU that are now – at the next level or, you know, somewhere close to mm-hmm. that. So you, you have to look at it and yeah, it's gotten a lot more competitive, especially last season, two games that both really went down to the wire in that ninth inning. FIU gives up three in the ninth uh, at home. And then they gave up, I believe three more in that ninth inning um, at UM, which included that Levinson walk off just a tough overall game too, especially that Mark light game. That was, I believe in the rain. Yeah. Uh, and, and you remember that Jake. And on top of that, you also have to think about it and tell yourself, look, I mean, they got screwed over kind of too. The the ref, the umpires weren't very good. Uh, I was talking no, they you. weren't. You may have seen it after that game, but Brendan Rooney kind of threw all his catcher's gear on the field, and he almost got a post-game ejection. So it just shows you how rough of a game that was for the Panthers. And, you know, FI, I won't say the exact words he said, but FIU manager Rich Winton really went into how big that series against FAU means to this program and this school. Yeah. Imagine just how much more it'll mean to take down an ACC opponent, a power, I guess now power four school with no Pac-12 uh, in the Hurricanes. And um, this is a Hurricanes team that has kind of had the same trajectory as the Panthers this mm-hmm. season. They're 11 and 8, as you mentioned. They have kind of had a good start to their conference uh, slate. I will pull yeah. up their schedule now. Funny, let's do that real quick. They are 11 and 8, 4 and 2 in the conference. They just came off of a serious win against the number 15 ranked. Uh, North Carolina. They took a game this season against yeah. uh, Florida. They've also they also defeated jo- Virginia in their win. But uh, there uh, are there losses are, here and there. Yeah, yeah, so. a couple losses here and there. But for the most part, they've been very good. They have not lost a uh, midweek matchup besides that UCF game. Right. And funny enough, uh, Long Island, the team that FIU saw at the yep. start of the season, that middle game of their series. Ah, well, actually, the, they the, lost the, FGCU. FAU, yeah, FAU in a midweek. FAU well. and FGCU, oh, so they have not been very good against the state of Florida this year. I don't <laughs> think they aside no. from uh, the Gators, who they've beaten their conference matchup. Yeah, um, no, no, they're not conference matchups. That's no, they're, it's not. It's not a conference matchup. Yeah, and, conference, but but it, but it was here in Coral Gables, and they still lost the series. So. Exactly, but so yeah. you know, the Hurricanes are a good team. But I think we've been saying this throughout this whole offseason, Jake, that it really does feel like FIU's do a win. And I think, uh, well, we're recording this on Monday. So tomorrow, I think it would be the day they get their win. Uh, if I'm sharing my prediction a little bit too early. Oh, okay. Uh, You're we, sharing we your could, prediction I, a bit early. I think we're going to go a little bit into the pitching matchup at some point. So I'll just quickly mention it now. Okay. They're going with David Eckes. I, I, Jake, you know, David Eckes is not a bad pitcher by any means. He's actually had a really good year for the Panthers. But, you know, you look at his last start, he was actually pretty good. Goes one and one third. Uh, strikes out two, doesn't give up any runs. He's actually been really good this year. He has only allowed two earned runs, um, only seven hits on the season. He struck out 11, but I find it weird that they're going with David Eckes here to start the game off when mm-hmm. I, I know he's a freshman, but you, I, I really would have liked them to go with Evan Alwine here in this in this scenario. Right. Again, I'm not the manager. They probably know a lot more than I do, but right. you would have. I, I would have liked to see an Alwine followed by Eckes. Eckes could really get that meat of the order, get the meat of the game, while Alwan just gets you a couple innings. And, you know, I, I, I'm really interested to see who the Panthers use out of their bullpen. I mm-hmm. would expect to see a Zach Lampton. I would expect to see a Richie Pena who didn't see action. Maybe yeah. an Evan Alwan. So it, we'll get into the statistics and the details of this game soon. But it's going to be such an interesting game because the big thing to notice is this is the first true midweek game that FIU plays this season. Um and just the way that that first conference matchup won against Middle Tennessee, which, by the way, huge win. You covered 
two yes. out of the, you covered two out of the three games in that series and they really and you saw a lot of different things i mean hector candelas who really didn't play prior to that first conference matchup coach witten probably just holding him back until that moment he looked really good jeff lacory finally got it going man he's been needing yes. it yes uh, alex uyola finally as well those guys all made it into the pro baseball radar top teams of the week i think it was andre martinez uyola and lacory so you know props to them so yeah, we'll see what cool. happens, Jake. I mean, it, it, we'll, we'll get into the intricacies of this game a little soon, but there's a lot yeah. to like with FIU and why they should definitely be favored. I, well, we'll have to look up that line. Favored is a bold statement when you play. We'll have to look up the line. But, oh, yeah, up. yeah, definitely check the look, line. I'll look but, it up while you talk. Yeah. You know, we, it's funny. We've spoken to some of the veteran players like Ryan Guida and, of course, before he graduated, Alex Sanchez. Uh, they always said that when the schedules were released, they would highlight the my, the – games they would play against the University of Miami to play some of their best baseball because they knew that, first of all, it's going to be a nationally – it's usually a nationally televised game, as, as is this game. It's going to be on um, ACC Network. You're going, to, you're going to have a lot of spotlight on you, and they're, they're always going to be a good opponent that they know personally because, again, it's only like a 20-minute drive from FIU to the University of Miami, uh, assuming traffic is moderate. Um so, and, and again, we've spoken with some of the uh, newcomers to this to this roster. Of course, you have Brylan West, Jeff LaCorey, some of these newcomers that we've spoken to on episodes of the Plaza Podcast. They also share their excitement in going to Mark Light Field, experiencing the atmosphere there for the first time in, uh, against a program that has won a whole host of national championships in the past and are desperately looking for another. So the energy that uh, – FIU brings to these games against the University of Miami. We know it's, it's some of their highest that they have uh, in in the entire series when they play. And, and, I, and no, I no, think no, real, real quick, I cannot find them. So if you want to look for them, okay, I, I will let you do it. I, I actually don't think they have live betting odds for this. But anyways, uh, I, I just the importance of this game too because you're playing them next week too. By the way, it's yeah. a back to back midweek against the, the Canes and. You know, these games, and you kind of mentioned how important it is. These games get packed out. If there's a game at FIU Baseball Stadium that has full capacity, it is that game against the Kings. Yeah, Kings fans travel. They, you travel don't, well. you don't, they, they not only travel well, but FIU fans also show up. So that's yeah. the big thing about it, too. Because they really want to rub it into, into the Kings' faces that's when it I mean, finally yeah. happens, when they finally beat them, which uh, we've all been praying for for a while. It hasn't happened yet. But I know we felt confident a couple in a couple of the matchups last season, but it feels like this season – these are the most even that these teams have been stat wise, pitching, batting, fielding. These teams, I mean, just look at the record 11 and 9 compared to 11 and 8. Not to mention the, the strength and uh, just the batting order that FIU has. It's probably, I'd say, the best batting order they've had in years. And that's no disrespect to what they, what they were able to do last year because last year's offense for FIU was outstanding. This feels like that when they're playing their best, they can be even better. I mean, it's I, insane. It's absurd, some of the games they've had, it's that, especially that game in which they run-ruled uh, Middle Tennessee uh, back on Sunday, 16-6, to 11-6 to the, the day before. Yeah, I think the important thing when it comes to FIU's 11-9 and nine and the Canes' 11-8 and eight is just how different their schedules have looked. Now, mm -hmm. the Canes have had some cupcake games. There's just no other way to say it. They face oh, FIU. Hell. So did, so did FIU. I New mean, Jersey of in, New, exactly. New yeah. Jersey Institute of Technology. But now you look at you look at some of the Canes' losses this season to FGCU, yeah. extra innings, twelve innings. Mm -hmm. Florida seven to three, eight to four. They had an easy win against Stonehill. Well, actually, no, not even that was a pretty close game, seven to six game. You UCF lost to Virginia. Three, four they were most recently run ruled. Uh, they were they themselves were run ruled by North Carolina, I believe. 18 exactly, but again, North Carolina, mm -hmm. number North, no, North Carolina is a fantastic school. Yeah, you, you have to look at it and you have to tell yourself, Look, I mean, this is the Kings team that was looking on the outside end of the top 25, but their loss against that final game against North Carolina really put them out. Mm -hmm. And FIU has a chance to spoil their outside looking in chances even more. And mm -hmm. for FIU, it'll help out their RPI. Johnny's the master when it comes to RPI, so. Um, uh, we Johnny's. By the way, let, let 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 let's clear the air. Johnny's over in Georgia, how, with the uh, swimming and diving team as they compete in the uh, NCAA uh, regionals. Uh, so, of course, best of luck to them. We'll talk a bit more about what's going on in the world of FIU athletics later. But that's where Johnny is right now. So, yeah, good for him, and uh, best of luck to them. So, 
But yeah, it, it's funny that both teams are coming in in exact opposite situations. FIU just run ruled a conference opponent. Uh, Miami just got run ruled by a conference opponent. Granted, uh, I think Middle Tennessee and North Carolina are two different ends of the baseball spectrum, if you if you'd like to say that. But again, any given any given baseball game, some magic can happen. And um, going back to the pitching for a second, you alluded to uh, the the choice of I believe David Eckes that's going to make the start for it. Uh, FIU today. You had mentioned Allwine to be who you would prefer to be the starter. AJ Ricketts spoke about this in yesterday's game. It feels like the pitching, the ideals of FIU's pitching situation as of right now is to leave most of their top talent, like some of their strongest arms and some of their uh, uh, overall best pitchers towards the latter end of games as more of the relievers and the closers uh, in contrast to who they have as the starters. Do you think that's a pretty accurate accurate situation on what FIU is doing pitching wise game after game. Now to clarify, uh, it was not AJ Ricketts on the broadcast. Oh, it was good. Um, no, but um, I think it's fair to mention that he's not wrong, but again, it's a, it's a midweek game. You're not going to use. Who was like, it? Wait, who was it? Was it Corey or it was Corey and no offense. I forgot the other guy's name. Okay. You'll, you'll have to look at the game notes or whatever. But right. I think the fair thing to mention is that it's a midweek. You know, you're not going to see Ryan Kabarkis or Orlando Hernandez pitch in a midweek game. Unless there's nobody else, they're not going to pitch. And again, Kabarkis pitched yesterday. So mm-hmm. you're not going to see him against the Canes. Like, that's why I'm saying, like, David Eckes makes sense here. I am surprised they're not going with him more in the, during the normal year. But, I mean, just going through some of the options that they'll probably go with tomorrow. Um, really quick, some right-handed pitching options. Left-handed, I'm sorry. Jaden Bishop could see some games. Again, Tristan Dietrich, Ryan Ryerson, um, Zach Lampton, Chantress. Those are just some guys that I could see really getting the action. And then for righties, Richie Pena, Bryce Green. I think you could see Cam Kleins. Um, I, I really could see Alfonso getting some action. And I'll want. So, I, I mean, you're not going to see someone like a Logan Rundy or a Cameron Knox or a Owen Puck get action in this game. I think it's it's not, you know, the statement is correct, but again, it's a little too over exaggerated in that sense where you're gonna not you're not, you know, you're gonna save your best arms. That's evidently gonna happen because it's a midweek game that no offense, as fun as the matchup is and as fun as the rivalry is, it doesn't mean anything at the end of the day because what now yeah. matters is that conference record and they're gonna go up against a very good Western Kentucky team this weekend. And that is the real match to be looking at, not this University mm-hmm. of Miami one. Now, yeah. there's a reason we all go. There's a reason why it gets packed out because this one has some added motivation. It has more of the bragging right. It has more of, you know, you're not going to lose to this team 10, 11 times in a row. But you also have to look at it in the sense where Western Kentucky is a damn good team, and it's going to show how good your offense is against an ACC opponent. Now, can you do that against another good opponent in Western Kentucky who – we we aren't going to preview now. We'll probably preview towards the end of the week. But they're a damn good ball club, mm-hmm. and, and and especially considering FIU schedule, what they've done since the beginning of the season, leading up to having to go on the road to Bowling Green, Kentucky. They have not left the state of Florida yet this season. You're they right, traveled man. up to Daytona. They traveled up to Boca Raton for a couple games, and they're going to take like a, again a short twenty minute drive to Coral Gables to take on the Miami Hurricanes before you finally have to get on a bus or get on a plane. I don't know exactly how they. Uh, leave for those uh, uh, cross state matchups, but you're going to have to get on a long trip to uh, uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky to, to take on the, uh, as you mentioned, a very good conference opponent. So this game against Miami is again, going to going to be one of the, a good test to see where FIU is at when it comes to batting and pitching against some of the top talent in the region. And, and, and you could even say across the country with the sort of the prestige that the Miami hurricanes uh, tend to play with. Um, and again, I, I think we need to hammer this point down. This is a midweek game. You're not going to see the yeah. best Canes pitchers. Uh, that's why we're seeing someone like a Drew Dwyer, who mm-hmm. you know, he was at Lynn for two years. He had he was really good at Lynn. Mm-hmm. He str- he, he's been struggling with the Canes in his first year with them. Um, or actually, yeah, his first year? No, this is his second year with the Canes. He's a graduate student. Um, he's been all right. I mean, 2.1 innings. He, he's going to get the start. It's either it, – yeah, it's him because that's what Johnny mentioned in the preview. So it should be interesting, this guy going up against a team that kind of, I guess, was fairly his competition at the D3 level. No offense, but that's just how it is. And this is a good test for the pitching for FIU. I mean, you kind of mentioned it. 
David mm-hmm. Eckert has a good chance to go out there, and if he shoves, he has a good chance to make a weekend, you know, the conference rotation or the conference bullpen at that point. And that's a good thing if you're losing guys on the midweek side. But again, um, should be a great opportunity. I expect to see Al one. I expect to see Dietrich go tomorrow for the Panthers. One right yeah. lefty there on that end. And with Dietrich, it's it's really interesting, and we could dive into this a little bit. He's kind of been hurt a little bit too. He, I was talking yes. to him. I was talking to him in the middle mid in the middle not middle game of the Boca series, and he was telling me that every time he 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 holds it like grips the baseball, it really does hurt his finger. So that could really be the reason why he's having a lot of control issues. Um, you hope that's going to get solved soon. I'll want it. I mean, I don't know if you've seen him, Jake, but that guy is huge. He is about yeah. six, four, six, five. He is a big guy who's just so imposing, long arms, really just handing the ball off to the catcher. That's kind of how it feels. So we'll see. Definitely an interesting case there on what they could do. And that would really be cool to see them throwing the freshmen in there in this big game yeah. or what this this oh look again uh, it's a midweek but this game means so much to this program it would snap a 10 game losing streak which has gone from since 2018 they haven't beat this yeah. team and they have the chance to do it tomorrow night we, we saw what outline did when he took on uh bethune cookman uh, not that long ago he went three innings threw 40 pitches gave up no runs only a single hit and struck out three, some pretty solid numbers considering. Uh, I believe that was his first start. And he, uh, he what did he do he, against FGCU? I, I think he did not do very well, but so uh, uh, let me let me double check. Um, uh, not not to completely jump out of the pitching category, but I do want to talk a bit more about, about what FIU obviously um, is very solid in and is sort of the backbone of their team right now, and it's their offense and how good they can be in a in any given inning. Most most importantly, the sixth inning, which is really how they found their magic against uh, Middle Tennessee. But uh, one player I think has really stood out, and again, the obvious players like Brylin West at the uh, 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 Brylin West and Ryan Guida is two of those players that you know uh, they're going to be good batters. But Jeff Lacory and how he began the season, I believe, at the second spot, and then Coach Witten moved him down to the sixth spot, and now he's really made a home for himself there. He had a very fantastic series against. Uh, uh, Middle Tennessee, he hit a solo homer in that in, in the uh, series final, which is super awesome to see. Jeff Corey, ever since moving down to that sixth spot, has pretty much become, again, another staple of a an, another an otherwise really good batting order for FIU. Yeah, and he, and he was originally the fifth the fifth hitter on this in this line. If he went down even more, and you mm-hmm. know, I, I'd spoken to him that first time, and it was after in that in that that Bethune game where he hit the homer, and he really mentioned just like you know it. it, it it takes pressure off of me because most of the time you're going to see Brylin get on base and I'm following him up. I don't have a good idea of, you know, I mean the bottom of the order, middle to bottom of the order. I get a better opportunity to drive guys in. I get more time to prepare myself for that at bat. But again, yeah, having Jeff LaCorey at the sixth spot in your lineup shows how good the top of the order can be or is mm-hmm. at the moment. I mean, um, this lineup from top to bottom can hit. I mean, there's no other way to put yeah. it. I think the biggest issue with them has been clutch. They haven't been very clutch. We've seen it at times. I believe it was that final game against uh, Notre Dame. Bases loaded. Brylin struck out. It was a pop out, and they just weren't able to get anything going there. That shows you got to be a little bit more clutch. They had chances against Bethune when they went up to Daytona. I mean, they've had their opportunities. And last year, FIU came in the clutch. They were a very clutch team last season, especially in these games against the Hurricanes. That first game... Uh, I believe that, that may have been the second game at Mark Light, the one that they got walked off of. Yeah, uh, you have to look at it and you have to tell yourself they had a good chance. They Thank came you. back. They, they really put themselves in a great position. I, I believe it was that Girardi hit with Alex Sanchez there. I mean, that, those were the good times. And hopefully, you know, tomorrow we'll see. You know, I, I don't know how the weather will be. Maybe you could see a repeat of the, this game. Check the forecast real quick to see what it's going to look like in Coral Gables. But to answer a previous question, Al Wine against Florida Gulf Coast uh, did not finish a full inning. He um, gave up two hits, four earned runs. Uh, a lot of that was off of four uh, batters hit by a pitch, which filled up the bases. He did struck, strike out one, but unfortunately – a very short, not a very good outing against the Eagles. But again, um, when he started against Bethune Cookman, he found some success, and of course, he, he got the win for that, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. Uh, with that said, again, you have you have sort of the the, the staples of this offense and or, or this starting lineup and where they are. You have Brylin West, 
leading off. You have uh, Ryan Gwede at the DH at the, at the three spot. And then down the line, you have LaCorey at the six spot. Those are a few players that day in and day out you can really have confidence in that they will get the bats going. Uh, it was sort of a – I understand it was sort of a one-time thing, but the, the amount of players hit by pitches in that Middle Tennessee – Series specifically, the Sunday game was pretty crazy. We know has been hit a lot yeah. this season. That was a big part as to how FIU found success in those short bursts and those single innings where they scored six runs in an inning, which is absolutely absurd. And by the way, uh, that first game against Middle Tennessee, FIU again had a shot to win. It was the comeback cast. They, I, I believe, at one point they were only down a run before Middle Tennessee eventually broke away. Um, and then I believe you had that instance in I think the Saturday game, where of course the freaking dropped on a strikeout rule, whatever that is, and then Brylan West messing up the catch at first base. It is what it is. They ultimately got the win. They won the series against Middle Tennessee. It's always nice to start off conference play winning the series, right? It gives you good momentum going in, and of course it's. I say that and it's ironic, but they're about to have one of their biggest games against a non-conference opponent. But as far as they're concerned, it might feel like a conference opponent considering how often they play this team. Again, playing the same team four games in a season is pretty nuts. I mean, that's more than they play most conference opponents, which is three games. So, um, yeah, should be fun. And, uh, well. Uh, I have one more one more stat I want to share here. Did you check the weather in Cortland? Let, let, let me do that real quick. Coral. It'll be beautiful. It'll be beautiful. I already checked. Oh, yeah? But I do want to share a fun stat here. Well, not fun. It's a, it's a really weird stat, but really sad. Ryan Guida last year got hit 12 times by a pitch. This year, he's at eight hit by pitches. So he's on track to really break that, his own record. And amongst I the mean, conference, it, actually, him and Brylan West are tied for – him, Brylan West, and Caleb jo- Caleb Johnson, and Gabe Young, two Jack State guys, two FIU guys, all tied for second in the conference and hit by pitch at eight hit by pitches. I and guarantee you, if you were to ask Ryan about that, he said, you know, I'm just happy to get on base and help my team. You know, he'd say FIU, something like that. And FIU leads the, leads the conference with the most hit by pitches at 46. That's really – that's a really and it's, and it's not even close. They are far ahead of the most – I, but I guess if you want a fun, a better stat offensively, um, they are four, one, two, three. They're tied for third with the most home runs in conference USA at twenty eight. Hey. That should change tomorrow if they hit two more. They'll be. Hey, I was about to say it's kind of impressive they they do so well in home runs as everyone always talks about. FIU baseball stadium is not a very home run friendly stadium for batters to play in, but FIU has still done a pretty good job at that. So. Again, kudos they've to struck, them. I guess the, not, not the way you want to see it. They, they have the third most strikeouts in the conference. Oh. Um, aside from strikeouts the, as in the batters have struck out or the pitchers have delivered strikeouts? Batters have struck out. FIU, who has actually the least amount of stolen bases in conference, USA. They are six for six on stolen bases. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to talk about strikeouts, uh, well, we could go through a couple of pitching stats before we go. Yeah. Uh, FIU is – fourth in ERA, they are eighth in innings pitched, which doesn't really matter. Um, they are they have the fifth most amount of saves, but are tied for third in that category. They have given up the fourth most runs in Conference USA at one twelve. Mm-hmm. They have given up the sixth most most amount of walks, which is actually pretty good when you look at it. And they have struck out the fourth most batters. So that's pretty good. Um, really have to be happy where they are at. They have actually hit the second most people. So not the best. But, again, some cool stats to throw out there right before we go into conference play yeah. here. The, the, the last question I, I, I want to ask, Kevin, in regards to this game is um, who are some of the – Essentially, who who are you? You mentioned at the top some of the big name players for the Miami Hurricanes, but who do you feel like are some of the unsung heroes of this Canes roster? That I, I know you've you've done your research. You wrote that amazing preview uh, that you all should check out on the pause up page for this game between my Miami and FIU. Just in your eyes, who are the biggest threats, either newcomers or even freshmen or transfers on Miami on Miami's batting order? They, that scare you the most as far as this matchup goes. I mean, you got to say Daniel Covet. I mean, that fre- freshman guy. He's a freshman, right? He's a freshman. He's a stud. 
I mean, there's no other way to say it. Really, that's the one that stands out to me. Lorenzo Carrier got a couple games of action against FIU. I told you that guy's that guy's huge. So that has got like nine home runs and let me see, 26 RBIs. I mean, for a stud, man. And then obviously Jason Torres, I think another newcomer there. Um, I, I'm excited to see those guys. I'm excited to see what this this starting pitcher does. He could be pretty good. Yeah, could be good. And uh, a lot of questions will be answered but again because again, this is just the start of a four game back series. To back, back to back, back to back midweeks, and I think towards the end of the season uh, they get them two more times. I remember when it was only two games uh, a year against the Miami. I get the luxury. Games. I get the luxury. I come to FI, you know, I get the luxury. <laughs> yeah. It. it, it Granted, this is getting off topic, but it was cool to see FIU take on Miami in basketball, and I hope that's a thing that continues next season as well, to see the Canes and the Panthers go at it over at the Watsco Center or, of course, the Ocean Bank Convocation Center, and to see them again go at it against the Miami Hurricanes in baseball so much, and why not? I mean, obviously travel costs are at a minimum because it's just a short bus ride over to each campus. The players in all likelihood know each other very well because, again, they probably all live close to each other as well. Same thing goes for the coaching staffs. And, uh, yeah, well, it's, it's a fun rivalry. We didn't, we didn't mention this. New coach for the Kings, J.D. Ortega, I think is his name. Okay. So we'll see how he looks. Yeah, that's right. Um, oh, what, what was I going to say? Um, well, yeah, just to sum it up. Uh, oh, yeah, it's a rivalry. Well, we want it to be a rivalry. In order to in order for it to be a rivalry, it has oh, to be competitive. Yeah. It has to be competitive and unfor- well, it has been competitive. It needs to be both teams need to get solid wins here and there. But unfortunately, like I said, that hasn't happened for a while for this FIU team. And I'm Not excited. The next sport team. we'll be talking about uh the next sport we'll hopefully be talking about rivalries is uh week right. three of FIU football against uh, FAU. <laughs> yeah, it's always Florida, fun. They, they want to be called Florida Atlantic now. So Florida Atlantic. Not FAU, they just want to be. They Florida. want to get rid of the FAU. I heard, so they're going to go That's with weird. Florida because I mean, I, I guess when they look at it, it's just like they're FAU, but they have FIU. So uh. University of Boca Raton, just like how Miami is UCG University of Coral Gables. Hey, all right, let's do it one more time, one more time, one more time. Yeah, you know, UCG. I remember when that all started. It really took off after my or FIU beat Miami in football that one year, and then everyone sort sort of trademarked UCG. Yeah. You know. So, alrighty then. We've talked quite a bit um, about this matchup between FIU and Miami. Uh, it should be a fun one. And again, we're going to be there. First pitch is at six o'clock. If you can't make it out to Mark Light Field, the game can be seen uh, on ACC Network. Uh, if you are there, go and grab a Mark Light milkshake. Oh yeah, I, I, that's what I want to talk about. Oh Mark yeah, milkshakes. Yeah, it's weird. I think the Canes have been doing sort of thematic milkshakes this season based on who they're playing. If I'm not mistaken, when they took on New Jersey, they had like a bagel, a, right? A cream cheese bagel milkshake. And when they took on the University of Florida, I don't know what flavor it was, but it had like a gator on top of it. So I really want to see what they do for uh this FIU series, if anything, maybe like a golden I don't know, so something golden related because. But will game. they do it for one game? I I don't think so. Well, they would bring it back later when they take I mean, them. Yeah, unless they bring it back. I'm excited, man. We're gonna get our little media coupon. Go down. Yeah, there. complimentary shake. milkshake. What, what, what do do you remember the flavors you you've already had? Like I don't, but I I would assume there's a new menu. So I'm excited. I, I had Another the red, you menu. know what? I had the red velvet one last time. I think I had think red velvet really ones. Really I had a peanut butter one, a Snickers one. They were we'll all try. Well, hey, I'm excited for tomorrow, man. Yeah, no. Uh, again, this is pre-recorded the day before, but by the time this goes up, we're probably already going to be in Mark Light Field doing a little bit of scouting, getting a Mark Light milk, milkshake eventually, and uh, getting ready to hopefully watch a, a big time upset. So, with that said, uh, again, you have uh, the 11 and nine FIU Panthers. The 11 and 8 Miami Hurricanes. I, I think I mentioned off the top, one of the most even matchups in this series that we've seen in a while. So we've been talking quite a bit. I think it's time now to, to uh, make a prediction. Uh, if, if the University of Miami faithful flood this preview, uh, we got to let them know who's going to win this game, FIU or Miami, and a, uh, a score prediction. I think we're both in agreement that this is probably going to be a high scoring. Matchup on both ends, but I'll let you take the wheel, Kevin. Who's winning? 
So we'll we'll choose an MVP of the game as well. Okay. I'm going to take FIU here. Um, hey! David Eckes has been really good. I think he repeats that. I don't know how many innings he'll go. Maybe he goes two or three. Hopefully, I mean, if, if you're Coach Winton, you hope he gives you four. Um, I think FIU wins. Do you think high scoring? I'm thinking more low scoring. I'm going to say they win th- four to two. And the MVP will be Brendan Rooney. He went yard the last time they took on the Canes. I think he'll do it again. Damn, you sniped my you sniped my uh, M- MVP prediction. Wait, pause, Kevin. What are you wearing? What's that shirt say? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, it was green. I so know. I knew you were going to say something. Scared. Look, man. Look, Kane's down. Hey, there you go. We'll, we'll screenshot that if FIU gets done. Yeah, hey, absolutely. I I was about to say maybe it's a St. Patrick's Day thing. I don't know, but um, we'll say that. Okay. I, now, I am on the fence that this is going to be a more high-scoring contest. I mean, I feel like both both teams are going to do well around the first and second innings, just getting some runs, maybe a few solo homers here and there. And then as the game progresses, you can go to the third, fourth, fifth innings. Things are going to slow down a bit until you get to the sixth or seventh. FIU has proven, has proven themselves a very talented team when it comes to scoring runs around the latter end, end of games, such as they did against Milton Tennessee. Around the sixth or seventh innings was when they really – took off scoring runs and Miami sort of does the same thing, except they have been the more dominant teams at times throughout the entire course of a game. Um, with that said, I'm going to say that FIU wins. I will give you a score prediction oh boy. of eight to six, eight to six, eight to six, a very fun a fun game to watch, obviously. It'll be a very long a game, game, man. Yeah, a fun game to report on. And my MVP for the game will be. So you know, I, be... I, I took your your MVP, right? Yeah. So you know what? I'll go with the leadoff man himself, Rylan West. Rylan West again, one of those players that really he he was excited about playing, about going to Mark Lightfield, going to Coral Gables, experiencing what that field has to offer. And I think he's going to uh, have a fun time, especially if the bases get loaded around the latter end of the batting order and Ryan West steps up to the plate. He can absolutely send one. He can send one out. So, all righty then. Let's uh, let's talk a bit about FIU athletics since we have some time here. Uh, before we get into sort of a roundtable look at what in the world has happened, I think we ought, ought to give basketball there their time in the spotlight because uh, the the men's team, the, the women's team is still going on. We found out earlier today they're going to be taking Stet, taking on Stetson in the first round of the um, NIT, which is really cool. I uh, I believe that's on that's uh, on Thursday at 7 p.m. So that should be super sick. Men's basketball. Um, it was reported earlier today, and Kevin caught caught wind of the news very early that the following players at least for now, have announced that they have – or not announced, but it's been reported, speculated even, that they have entered the transfer portal. And no, they, it's, it's official. They all so, yeah, Are all of them official? Yeah. Okay, so that's our – anyway, it's Arturo Dean, Mohamed Sonogo, and Patar Kravakovic. And obviously you also have uh, Seth Pinkney and Javante Hawkins graduating as seniors. Um, best of luck in whatever they decide to do following uh, – Right now, really, they got to plan ahead for that. But this is coming off a um, – technically speaking, it's a first-round exit for FIU. However, in the Conference USA postseason, they essentially played a play-in game where they actually did knock off Jacksonville State University by a score of 76-67 before essentially getting blown out by the number one seed, Sam Houston State, yeah, 28-59, who ultimately – could not win the conference as well. Uh, the old UTEP Western beat them, Kentucky, right? I believe UTEP beat them, and ultimately Western Kentucky won the whole thing. They will be representing Conference USA in the NCAA tournament, so March Madness, which is always fun to see. But, um, yeah, so oh. FIU men's basketball won a postseason game. Let's clear it. Let's get that out of their, our system. Congratulations to them. Now, let's get into the bad stuff. They were 11-22 and 22 this season, which was a worse record than what they had the prior year. 
they went one and twelve on the road, five and eleven in the conference, one and four in neutral site games. That being the uh, the Cayman Islands Classic, which they were invited to around the or the former end of like the earlier end of the season. And um, yeah, yeah, tough season. yeah. I mean, it was a tough season. And at the very least, you saw potential in sophomore Arturo Dean, who led FIU in everything. <laughs> Points, rebounds, assists, blocks, or not blocks, uh, steals. He led, I believe he still has leads the nation in steals, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that could have changed. Now, obviously, it might change once uh, the, the tournament starts, but still. Um, so, so we thought to ourselves, all right, we're going to have a, a solid piece for a couple more years, because this was a sophomore year. He had an amazing freshman year, one freshman in the year in the conference, a native kid from Miami, but he's not going to be on this team next two season. We don't know where he's going to go. In all likelihood, he's going to get some pow- some Power 5 offers, maybe some ACC or SEC offers. We'll see if he wants to stay in Florida, maybe go to our rivals and or over in Coral Gables or even Boca Raton. Um, see what he does there, but man. Arturo Dean was uh, the face of the franchise. Yeah, he was the, I'd say I'd argue he was the face of the franchise last year as a freshman, and obviously this year as a sophomore. And now, Coach Ballard, who uh, again has had some bad luck overall with with the transfer portal and and, and keeping players in South Florida. It's going to be back to square one for him, trying to figure out who can sort of lead the way for an FIU team. Because look at it. Okay, take you take away Arturo Dean out of the picture. You had Javante Hawkins as your arguably your best overall shooter. He's gone. You had size in Seth Pinkney. He's gone. Same thing with Patar, who was sort of work building a, a very solid prowess in the three-point uh, shooting. He was building that towards the latter end of the season. He's gone too. Um... We don't know the extent of Jonathan Abar's injury and how that'll affect him heading into uh, next season. So that that remains to me remains to be decided. But beyond that, my God, some of the biggest pieces FIU had in 2023, it's last 2024, are gone. And Jesus, Coach Ballard and FIU cannot keep a a, a steady team around for more than a season, more than two seasons if lucky this sucks man it, you have nothing to build on now you you have to start from scrap again yeah i honestly i knew there was always a chance for arturo would head to portal i thought as long as ballard is there arturo was gonna stay uh unfortunately that's not the case i thought as long as they won a postseason game as well and they actually did. i don't even think that was it I, honestly really? I, I don't think that was it but you also have to look at it you know, these last couple of years for FIU men's basketball, they've been trending down, and this was a little spike up with their win. And, you know, rightfully so, they were supposed to beat this team twice last year and in in this past season. They just didn't. And they were finally able to get their revenge in that final game, and they played a pretty damn good first half against Sam Houston from what I saw from the box yeah. score. But they couldn't close. They couldn't close. Lot, they couldn't close, and a lot of this really fell on Dean, where it really came down to – the Arturo Dean one-man show, and that's not going to be the case for the next two years for FIU basketball or the next couple of years. You really hope they bounce back, and if I'm looking at an early prediction, just even with whatever they whoever they bring from the portal and recruitment, you know, right now you'd have to think FIU is going to finish at the bottom of Conference USA. It's Again. And it's not even close, you know. <sighs> Maybe New Mexico State would finish before under them. Like, that's the only one I could think of, but right now FIU – you know, you still have some good pieces. You have Deshaun Giddens, who's going to come back from his injury. You have uh, Okechukwu Okeke, who, uh, on you know, with a little more experience and a little more go at it, he, he should be pretty polished. Uh, you still have a big man there, but FIU is going to have to prioritize big men in, in the portal as well yeah, as prioritize size. really find find a new backcourt, man, because you lost a new backcourt. They lost the front they court, lost find good three court. point shooters, find players who could find players who could do everything, and that is impossible to do in one offseason. I hate to say so. And maybe they bring some guys from the power five side. I mean, who knows? Some guys, I, I honestly, I don't know much about the basketball transfer portal, and both of us will learn as we go. But yeah. maybe a couple guys who weren't getting their chance at the power five will go down to the G5, and FIU may be able to snag a, a couple of them. 
I did see that Denver Jones as well uh, over at Auburn. They won the SEC. Good for him, man. He deserved it. That would have been a fun team with Denver Jones there. Another I don't know who they're playing in Martin Anderson, Hawkins. That would have been a fun team. I've had, who's Auburn playing in the uh, the tournament? Um, Denver Jones, by the way, in that championship game against Florida, had 11 points. So, I mean, that ain't bad, you know? Um, take it on Yale. Mike McDaniel school. Um, okay, well. Just, a, I guess, a quick Denver Jones, Jones shout out, but uh, yeah, um, <laughs> this sucks, Kevin. I mean, there was a little bit, there was a little glimpse of hope because, for as awful, I'll be just being blunt here, for as awful as this season was for FIU men's basketball, you had some games where you really got to see this FIU team at their best. I, I, I immediately think of senior day, uh, when they beat Western Kentucky at home, Javante Hawkins was a monster that game. And again, of course, the postseason game against uh, Jacksonville State, you were down 11 points at the half. You came back and eventually took the lead and kept the lead. So those games, we saw the best of this FLU men's basketball. And, oh, man, that's something that you can absolutely build on to potentially finally get a conference USA title, which, I mean, maybe I'm incorrect here. I don't immediately know off the top of my head. I don't believe they have a have a conference championship win in men's basketball yet. Or conference USA, I mean. Uh, so – it sucks. Uh, at what point does – and, again, thank God thank God, Johnny's not here because uh, he'd be losing his mind right now. But at what point does something need to change coaching staff-wise as well? Because um, a lot of assistant coaches have come and gone during Coach Ballard's tenure here at FAO. I believe he just wrapped up his sixth year, I want to say, um, with the Panthers. Um, there were some – was there a great season – at FIU men's basketball during his tenure? I mean, uh, I think his first was year, not... you, you may have been there, but his first two years were very good. He finished. I think, I think that was before my time. I, I, I want to say. Well, was... Either way, his first two years were very good. First two years were yeah. good. Once, once yeah. COVID hit, things uh, have not, things have been bad since 2019, 2020, then COVID. Uh, last season, obviously, was also great. I believe they were last in the conference USA last year, and obviously they're going to be last this year and I, you and I are already predicting that they're going to be last next year. And I mean, and look, they could have the greatest off season ever when it comes to finding young talent, finding recruits from uh, Juco or from the uh, P five level who want to get more playing time in, in, in a conference like CUSA for FIU. But I think men's basketball right now is the most depressing sport on campus for FIU as far as future because FIU football, I think they have, I think they, they have a, there are some parts of their roster that you can say, Oh man, they have, they have a great future. They have potentially a great future quarterback in Keewon Jenkins. Men's soccer's future is great. That's a very consistent program. Same thing with swimming and diving. Hopefully that put a smile on Johnny's face when he watches this. Swimming and diving is always going to be great in baseball. You know, you have Rich Wooden, you have a great batting order. This is this, by the way, this is a preview for FIU baseball. We've been going on a tangent here on men's basketball, but I mean, I mean, the season's over for them, and uh, I don't know. Maybe well, this is with women's year. basketball too. They they had a big senior class. They're losing a lot of girls, but again, yeah. but we, we, I don't think we can comment a whole lot on that because their season's not over. We'll get it's to that. It's not over, time. and you know, with women's basketball, there I, I do believe that it, it goes on with saying that recruitment on their end is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, I think we could wrap it up here. Yeah, made again, just a controversial opinion probably, but as far as all the sports at FIU or all the major sports, I'll say at FIU right now, the future with the men's basketball team is pretty bleak compared to the rest. And I hope Coach Ballard and the Panthers can figure this out. Um, but we will see. So, Alrighty then, let's finally do a look around to FI. Oh, actually, before we even do that, uh, Kevin, I, uh, you were you've gone to some football practices, by the way. I, I, oh I, yeah. Today, I mean, what do you have to, to be fair? I I haven't been very consistent. I've only been to one, but it's perfectly uh, fine. No, nah, yeah, yeah, I guess I went to pro day today. It was fun. Got to see some of the old, you know some of our former Panthers out there. Donovan Manuel had a very nice pro day. Mm -hmm. Jack Daly, Jalen Bracy. The very Daniel was good. He had his moments, but he was very good. Uh, so overall, good, strong day for the guys. Lucas Matias as well was out there. Um, practices look good. Nice to see Flex Joseph back out there. I'll be heading over there tomorrow before the game. Yeah. So 
just to get a, another good glimpse. They're already wearing their pads, so I, I missed that. But spring game, not too long away, and uh, yeah. should be fun. Any, 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 like any, I'm guessing no drama to report player wise. I know obviously some the coaching staff has a lot of new faces. What have you seen out of that? Well, it's not a lot of new faces, it's just one. Uh, Anthony Gator goes to cornerbacks coach, and they bring in, I'm not going to say his name, but former NFL guy, I'm not going to try. <laughs> Uh, they call him coach. They call him Coach Ku. So okay. we'll say that. Uh, so yeah, Ku. Yeah. Ku. Yeah, I don't hate it. All right. So again, practice still. There's still going to be a lot of practices left to go in the spring, and then as we get closer and closer to the football season, those will ramp up even more. And then before you know it, week zero, or week one is going to be here. FIU will be over in Bloomington, uh, taking on the Hoosiers to begin uh, the football season, which I know we're all very, very, very excited for. So, uh, alrighty then. Let's finally do a uh, a look around FIU athletics. So uh, let me take it away. Let's start off with again baseball. They're going to be taken on the University of Miami today. After this, they're going on the road for their first three game series on the road, not in Florida. It's over in Bowling Green, Kentucky, taking on the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. That's uh, starting on Friday, March 22nd at 7 p.m., finishing over on Sunday, March 24th. Then they're back in Miami taking on uh, the Hurricanes at the FLU Baseball Stadium on Tuesday, March 26th, and they're staying at home for a three-game series against Louisiana Tech. Now, softball currently has a 13-17 and record. They are coming off a unfortunate sweep against the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers uh, this past weekend. They're going to be over at uh, Felsberg Field also today over at uh, same time, 6 p.m., as they take on the FAU Owls for a midweek matchup before they head to Murfreesboro to take on the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders uh, uh, this weekend. Um, so, yeah, they currently have a 13-17 uh, and 17 record. Uh, we talked about men's basketball enough. Women's basketball uh, has a 20-11 and 11 overall record right now. They unfortunately fell to New Mexico State in the Conference USA Tournament in the first round, 63-50. to It was actually the second round, but uh, it was their first matchup in the in the tournament. They, however, have accepted a position to play in the uh, women's NIT tournament, which should be super fun. They're going to host the Stetson Hatters uh, this Thursday, March 21st at 7 p.m. over at the Ocean Lake Convocation Center. So, of course, best of luck to them. Hopefully their season continues a, a much while longer. Uh, beach volleyball, we always have to report on them because they are a really great program. They're 14-3. and three. Right now they're coming off a um, – a very solid um, performance at over at FAU for the FAU invite over at Pompano Beach. They took down Florida Gulf Coast, Palm Beach, and uh, 16th ranked FAU. They unfortunately fell to the number one ranked uh, USC, South, uh, Southern California. They are going to a TCU Invitational over in Fort Worth this weekend as they will are set to take on Washington, TCU, Arizona State, and Florida Gulf Coast. And uh, to wrap this up, of course, you have none other than FIU Swimming and Diving, who are beginning or who will be beginning the NCAA Championships on Wednesday, March 20th. And that'll continue to the 21st, the 22nd, and then we'll wrap up on the 23rd on Saturday. Of course, a lot of FIU swimmers and divers are uh, competing in this. And uh, yeah, Johnny will be there as well. Hopefully, Johnny will get us some good coverage as well. Uh, on what the uh, swimmers and divers are doing. So that was your um, look at around the world of FIU athletics. So a lot to be excited uh, for, Kevin. We unfortunately kind of had a sob story there about um, uh, men's basketball that took us a while. But, I mean, look, the season is now over for men's basketball. It's nice to sort of vent, vent a little as, again, season did not go the way we all wanted to. Of course, uh, women's basketball has a chance to do something really cool in the NIT, maybe bring home some hardware th uh, themselves. That'd be that's super cool to see. And of course, football, football's fo look, football never dies. Football is a sport that lasts all year. And uh, for what Kevin, for what you've told me and told us, the the fall, the practices are always fun. What you what you're able to see and hear, it's it's always lights out. Man. It's always lights out. It's always lights. Lights out. Out. You tried. It didn't. It didn't immediately go off. I, uh, that frustrates me a little bit. By the way, um, some of you may have been noticing the um, 
the little ticker on the bottom. Uh, one of the things that we we actually yeah. want you guys to know for those interested, uh, the final message says we are open to sponsorships. Now we have a lot of awesome viewers that that watch the Pause Up Podcast, Pause Up Preview. And I know some of you guys, if some of you guys own businesses, own 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 opportunities, and I know we have a lot of a lot of great fans here over at the Pause Up Podcast section one twelve, always represented, and we appreciate it. So. If you're open to collaborating with us, we are down to hear you out. So um, we recently added a bunch of new tabs to the pause up page, one of which being a contact us ses- uh, section where you can uh, let us know anything. But in, if you want to do something sponsorship wise with us, we are our eyes and ears are open. Right, Kevin? So, uh, yep. yeah, you send an it. email our way. Pause up podcast at gmail.com. It helps out a lot for us, for Jake and I. It helps us make those trips to Coral Gables, Boca Raton, even, you know, at some point. The Bahamas, when FIU goes back to the Bahamas. Yeah, when when that happens, we'll we'll be there. And uh, it's going to be super awesome. So just wanted to point that out to those who who are watching, who are potentially interested, because there are always always some, right? If you're open to a a sponsorship with us, we'd be super down. So send a message to us if you're interested. Yeah. And, um, we should, we should have someone out there for the FIU women's game. So yeah, that soon. Yeah. Well, that that is at the end of the day, postseason basketball. So we'll also let you know when our next episode of the podcast is it's been a hot minute. That last episode with Billy Gill was a very awesome one. And, uh, We've been very busy, you know. Obviously, Kevin was – or not Kevin. Johnny was swimming. Kevin with the Marlins, he's been going to and from Jupiter so many times. I've, I've lost track. And uh, not to mention the ongoing Florida Panthers season, which has been super fun for me and Alex Krutchik to be covering. But uh, now as basketball wraps up, baseball continues to go, we'll be having more and more awesome coverage. And, of course, our next episode of the Pause Up Podcast, which we'll let you know in due time with an awesome trailer probably. So – Alrighty then, Kevin. I think it's time to uh, wrap up here. As hopefully you guys are making your way to Coral Gables to Mark Light Field. If you see us, say hey. We'll say hey back. Uh, we'll grab a Mark Light milkshake, and we'll have a good time as uh, we watch the uh, FIU Panthers hopefully knock off the Miami Hurricanes. And uh, one last time, uh, yeah. Ah. Alrighty. <laughs> hopefully that doesn't Alrighty. haunt us. On that note, um, have a great have a great rest of the day. We'll. Uh, Catch you in Coral Gables, and as always, pause up.